all the lecture. My name is Anna Teti. I'm professor of histology at the University of L'Aquila, and it's a pleasure to um, uh, present to you uh, Professor Stefano Giovagnoli from the University of Perugia. Uh, professor Giovagnoli, if you can uh, switch on your uh, camera and uh, Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Uh, so, Professor Giovagnoli is Associate Professor in Biotechnology and Industrial Pharmacy at the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences uh, of the University of Perugia here in Italy. Uh, personal research interests uh, ground on technologies applied to the delivery of uh, biotracks, uh, bioorganic and inorganic nanoparticles and microparticles, and also directed approaches for the treatment of infection and inflammation. So today he will uh, present a lecture uh, entitled Biohybrid Biomimetic uh, Nanocarriers for the Delivery of Biological Drugs. So thank you very much, uh, Stefano, and the floor is yours. Thank you. I'll try to uh, okay. Uh, sorry, sir. Is the condivide? Uh... It's, it seems that I have a problem in uh, having the screen. Eh? It's asking me to use. Uh, um, uh, okay. Now, what, what I can do is uh, probably a browser problem. What's it telling me? Uh, I had this problem before. Anyway, I try to connect. Uh... Uh, Sarah, uh, is there anything that you can do for? Uh... Yes, it's. Uh, I, I mean, uh, disconnect one second and reconnect with another browser. Probably the problem will be solved. Uh. Okay. Because it's, it's problem of uh, the Mac. Okay. So if mind. you can reconnect, we can uh, wait just a couple of minutes. Yes, yes. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Sorry for that. No problem. I think that he disconnected. <clears throat> He'll be back quickly. Uh, Sarah, if it takes too long, maybe. Okay, can you see me? Uh, we see you, but okay. not the, the screen. Now, I'm going to have to share the screen. I'm sorry for this technical problem because it was unexpected. So I'll read, I'll... Can you see the 
Ainda? Não? Não. Não. But did you press uh, share when you no. see your screen? Okay, no, let, let me disconnect and reconnect again. He's telling me connecting. Okay, sorry, uh, I disconnect and reconnect. Probably that's the problem. We are six minutes late, Sarah. Is the next speaker available in case? Oh. Professor Decola? Maybe yes. Connected. Okay, here we go again. Okay, perfect. Nice work. Okay. Okay. I'm okay. so sorry for that. No <laughs> problem. You can just uh, put in the. It's always complicated with Mac computers. I don't know no why. Problem. Okay, go ahead. You can put in a projection mode and go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, uh, uh, th thanks for the organizers who invited me to this very, very interesting initiative and very uh, spanning known science with different disciplines, uh, different uh, topics. Uh, uh, this is probably, probably going back to Galileo, you know, age. Uh, uh, is one of the big differences you know, in the past. The scientists in the past were probably uh, uh, the span knowledge no, of uh, different science, scientific disciplines now. Instead, today we have more focused science on you know, many specific uh, uh, topics. So the talk today is, uh, I thought about uh, talking about the, uh, these new systems, uh, because this is a, 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 um, let's say, a, a um, scientific uh, uh, aspects that regard more therapy and medicine, uh, biotechnology across different disciplines and the application of carriers to drugs. Um, we know, we know this, this is what I want to we'll, uh, talk about, just a, a small outline uh, to explain you some basic, basic principles behind the use of nanoparticles uh, in uh, drug delivery in therapy, in medicine, and they are changing today the scenario of uh, uh, modern therapies. And uh, thanks to that, we can really they treat uh, pathologies that were not treatable yesterday. So um, these, these, uh, uh, some of the, uh, I, I don't know how familiar you can be about nanoparticles and nanotechnology in general, but uh, today we have a very, very huge uh, uh, arsenal of different possibilities. Um, in, 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 in nanocarrier and nanoparticles intended as a small nano size object, which is able to um, uh, migrate to the, to the to different environments, uh, included the organism. So we can uh, uh, Inject, we can administer these carriers loaded with drugs or other uh, different uh, molecules, uh, uh, ligands, whatsoever is needed for, to, to achieve the therapy, uh, and let these particles uh, diffuse into the body in order to reach districts and organs and tissues and cells, whatever is the target. So this is a, a way to uh, make uh, therapies more precise. Um, uh, and uh, these, uh, of course, have different advantages, uh, among which uh, the use of toxicity is one of them, but also uh, a more and more uh, high, higher in, in efficacy, especially in fields like cancer and other very 
they import the, the, the applications. Uh, this is just a, a, a slide presenting you, showing you some of the possibilities we have. Um, the problem, uh, so the principle is to deliver the drug into the body, is to avoid indiscriminate uh, distribution of the drug. So we don't want always to have a drug that uh, reaches all the tissues, all the organs, or, and off-target the regions into the body because this increases the possibility to have toxic effects. Most of the medicine you're taking uh, in, in pharmacy and using uh, every day, uh, they have not these uh, 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 properties. Um, if you think about antibiotics, if you think about anti-pain drugs, uh, they, they are not intended to treat uh, locally uh, the, the body. Uh, the problem uh, if they are not uh, uh, precisely tailored for that. Um, and uh, instead, with the nanomedicine, what we want to do is to create a system which is able to localize the effect as much as we can. Of course, there is no perfect uh, 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 strategy, no perfect object, no perfect solution that can uh, really assure uh, a unique targeting. So the uh, the the the, uh, uh, the bullet, the bullet, the magic bullet is not existing actually. So this is uh, how usually uh, targeting the drug targeting is represented. Not like to hit a target very precisely, but most of the time reality is different. Uh, reality is different because we are in a biological system. We are, we are in, uh, when we are dealing with biology, we have a lot of problems. Because biology means variability, uh, and so we don't. Most of the time, we don't know even the, uh, exactly how the target works, which are the mechanisms behind the effects we observe, and so we have a huge problems to be solved. And so, uh, um, what, what what we did? Why? How we can uh, really professionally try to make it make things better? in order to improve the capacity of these carriers to localize and to target a specific uh, site in the body. Uh, we know that the nanoparticles have different properties. So nanoparticles are nanometer objects, nanometer objects, up to 100, 150 nanometers. Remember that a nanometer is, is a, a, a one, one billion of a meter. So we have a tiny object which are just a little uh, bigger than uh, the molecules, the large molecules. Uh, and so size, shape, and uh, even properties, uh, molecular properties, especially in the surface, they change the way this uh, object behave into the body and their capacity to diffuse into the body. So changing these properties, we observe a change in the distribution of these uh, particles in the different organs. And so tailoring uh, properties like surface charge, presence of particular uh, molecules on the surface, the shape, the, the particle size, first of all, we can really manage to uh, increase the capacity of these particles to diffuse straight uh, in, uh, towards a specific target into the body. And this is a big, big advantage under the point of view of therapy, uh, because in this way we can improve uh, a lot the efficacy of the therapy. Um, this is the reason why uh, anti-cancer therapies today are much more effective than uh, uh, before, uh, because uh, uh, precision medicine has now entered, these, these carriers have entered the clinics. And so they are, can be applied to improve the therapy uh, of a treatment, the chemotherapeutic treatment that we know that is very toxic treatment. Um, so uh, we know that uh, this, uh, the, every, um, not everything that is gold, actually, uh, no, uh, everything uh, it, it's, uh, it's working perfectly in the body because the body is provided by a huge defense system. You know? Uh, we know that, that the, uh, um, the rest system, uh, the reticular, reticular endothelial system, which is this network of organs that is protecting us from foreign invasion, you know, foreign of, uh, 
uh, exomaterials, uh, toxic materials, uh, pathogens, and so on, uh, is a sentinel no? and uh, is uh, actually intercepting all the foreign things, no? the, for all the alien things entering the body, for, uh, luckily, in order to protect the body from the uh, external toxic invasions. And so this is what happens also with the nanoparticles that usually, usually are uh, taken up by the rest, by the liver, to different mechanisms. This is one of them with oxonization and so on. Uh, so we have to overcome these barriers. So there are many different barriers we need to overcome in order to let these particles into specific targets in the, in the body in a uh, meaningful amount, because it's not enough that we reach the target. We need to reach the target to a uh, extent that is enough to have a pharmacological action, and so to have a, a therapeutic effect. Um, this is this slide just to show you how changing the changing the size, uh, the, the shape, and the surface properties can change the distribution in these organs. We have like eyes, liver, spleen, kidneys, uh, and, and see how and you see how accumulation of, of nanoparticles changing according to the change of these properties. And this is well known, well well established today. And we know how to change sites, how to change and to tailor these properties in order to modulate the distribution of these particles into the body. But it is not that easy as a stall. You have here an example of what happens changing the surface of a nanoparticle. Uh, you have a, a, a blood profile of the, the liver drug when it's in the injected and when it's delivered to another administration route, think about the oral administration, for example, and you see that everything changes. Body distribution, the blood profile is changing. So it means there's a huge impact of these properties on the final result. So how these particles behave into the body. So uh, we need to understand the way we can uh, tailor these particles, but unfortunately, uh, the, as, I, as I told you before, the capacity of targeting uh, is uh, really tricky to reach. And the reason of that is because when we inject these, these particles into the body and put in contact these particles with a biological environment, these particles are changed. And how are they are changed? They are changed because they get into contact with the fluids, body fluids. Uh, there are other molecules, other substances that uh, absorb on the surface of the particle. So, if we, we can tailor the particle surface, you know, adding uh, antibodies, adding ligands, adding molecules that allow us to target specific uh, cells, specific tissues, but when we put in contact the particles with the body, we have the formation of what is called protein corona, because proteins absorb on the surface and they change the physical and chemical uh, uh, identity of the particle, changing the capacity of the particle to localize and to hit the target. And so this creates a lot of problems, a lot of issues. Uh, it's because uh, uh, it's a biological identity, which is most, most time not known, difficult to be predicted, it is changing, it depends on a huge amount of factors. You have uh, some of them listed here, but I mean, there are so many different uh, uh, factors that affect the, the, the way particles are changing into the body. And it's difficult, really difficult to predict that. And they are changed in the, according to subjects and species. You all know that, for example, we need, the, we need models you know, in order to test our, the new medicines. And these models are animal models most of the, most of the time, mice or superior, higher uh, models uh, uh, like monkeys or dogs or whatsoever is needed. But uh, interspecies variability is huge. And so if this effect uh, increases the differences when we test our, our medicines into animal models compared to humans. 
And uh, this creates a lot of problems because these models become not really reliable and not predicting. And so uh, most of the time, what we observe in animals is completely different compared to what we observe in humans. And uh, it would be, for developing new medicine, this is a, a big hard work because uh, it, it's a limiting a lot the knowledge and the possibility to transfer medicine to humans to the clinic. So this protein corona effect is a huge problem. And uh, this is the reason why uh, very recently, I mean, this is a, a, a search that has come up in the last uh, 15, 20 years, uh, 10 years perhaps, uh, of a new idea on how to shape these particles and uh, how we can really overcome the problem of the protein corona into the body and how can we limit the effect and the, the, the buildup of this uh, new identity in uh, new biological identity of the body? And uh, we, this, this is a big, it's been a very uh, winding path, if you can imagine, a very, very difficult one. Uh, and we come up today with uh, the so called third generation nanoparticle. These third, third generation nanoparticles are nanoparticles which are formed using biological materials. So the idea is to shape these particles, employing uh, uh, cell materials, cell membranes, proteins coming from selected cell sources, selected tissue sources, in order to have a particle which is not uh, uh, prone to uh, a huge intervention, two changes in the contact with the fluids because it's a natic particles. So the composition of the particles is not recognized as an external body. And uh, this is a big, big advantage in order to limit the product effect of protein corona and to increase the density of the capacity of targeting of these uh, objects. And this third generation nanoparticles have been uh, 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 named as biohybrid or biomimetic, biomimetic nanoparticles because they are actually a representation of a biological system. Um, so these particles are typically formed and before that uh, come using the membrane proteins and lipids. So we can extract the lipids and membranes from the membrane, membrane molecules. Uh, from cells, from selected uh, cells, and uh, shape them into nanoparticles, which embeds uh, drugs, uh, multiple, also multiple drugs. Uh, um, and there are today two different kinds of these kind of, of the nanoparticles. The one which are composed by isolated membrane proteins or a whole cell membrane. So we can take the cell membrane, uh, of course, we need to extract these materials from cells and uh, shape them with the technology, available technologies, uh, and into uh, nanoparticles, which uh, I will, uh, and anyhow presents on the surface the same characteristic of the cell. So the same proteins, the same lipids, uh, which has a, a makes a lot of sense because allows us to employ these moieties, these ligands, these uh, surface characteristics in order to tar target specific uh, 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 tissues, organs or cells into the body. And so today we have different sources that have been, have been used to, to, uh, to prepare these nanoparticles from the erythrocytes, leukocytes, from viruses as well, or bacteria and, as well, platelets and so on. So there is a a large, large amount of the possible sources that can be employed. And these nanoparticles tell, uh, provide a lot of uh, advantages, especially in enhancing the target capacity and improving the pharmacokinetics. You know, pharmacokinetics is how a drug or an object, a therapeutic object, is behaving into the body. So how it distributes, where it accumulates, and how it's eliminated, how it's absorbed, and so on. Uh, and so they give us also the possibility to deliver uh, biological drugs, so called bio drugs. Bio drugs are drugs uh, which are biological origins, like proteins. Uh, most of them are proteins, 
or anyway, the molecules that are endogenous into the body can be transformed into drugs because they have a, 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 a specific therapeutic effect or specific mechanisms into the body. Uh, and they allow us to use uh, uh, these biodrugs, like, for example, DNA or uh, so nucleic acids, for example, uh, you can be easily delivered through this uh, strategy because these particles provide a very, very biocompatible and compatible uh, environment to these molecules, which we know to be very unstable, actually, very uh, um, prone to degradation, denaturation. So uh, the, this approach is also very, very effective and allows us to develop this kind of new therapies. Um, about production technology, how we can produce these particles? So there are different possibilities. Uh, of course, extraction from the cells, uh, and we have uh, uh, homogenization processes, physical processes that allows us to produce these particles, the tiny particles, uh, even much smaller than 100 nanometers through extrusion, sonication. But one of the choice, technological choice, is uh, the microfluidics. Microfluidics is a technology exploiting uh, flow, the flow system, uh, which is uh, uh, directed towards a, a, a specific uh, microchip, which it has a, a specific geometry in which, which uh, we can mix the components and build up our particles uh, in a very controlled and precise way. Um, microfluidics are uh, uh, different, um, several advantages because, I mean, uh, homogenization problem, um, sorry, methods have different problems. We are bound to the fact that uh, uh, physical uh, uh, approaches are uh, uh, challenging approaches, especially to biomolecules. And the problem is that we can have uh, processes of denaturation, uh, drug loss, degradation. Uh, which create a lot of problems in the final, uh, to reach the final payload and final stability of these carriers. Uh, and so my, microfluidic uh, is today one of the technology of choice. And it is ba based on a phenomenon which is uh, uh, called like, uh, it's defined like a chaotic advection, which is a mass transport phenomenon in which we can mix different substances, different, different uh, uh, molecules and substances in different means, in different vehicles, in, in the, into a system which allows us to combine them in a very precise way. I don't want to go into details because we have too much time on that. But anyway, this is very scalable, very transferable, technologically speaking and industrially speaking, and a lot of advantages uh, which are, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, due to the fact that we can build up the system in an easy way, we can uh, change the geometry of the chip, we can change the conditions, we can control very precisely the flow of the materials. And so we have, we have a, a very nice system which is scalable and cost-effective, so it's not very expensive as well. And uh, now it's been established also a clinical level. And so we can uh, today, some of the uh, vaccines that have been used for COVID-19 have been produced using this technology, for example. And uh, there are also drawbacks, of course, because a complex system anyway, uh, which needs a, a precise technology in order to be controlled. Um, and uh, we have uh, also some difficulties in some aspects uh, because we need to uh, uh, investigate very, very precisely the fluid dynamics of the system in order to be sure to have a control system able to combine these uh, materials in a proper way. But anyway, um, going through this, I mean, we have today the technology that is able to allow us to transfer these uh, nanoparticles uh, to the clinic, and this is uh, one of the most important things. Um, so this technology now is being used for using lipid nanoparticles, polymer nanoparticles, different materials and different shape, we can really uh, um, change also the combination and changing combination, we can change the shape of particles uh, and uh, use uh, uh, cellular material sources uh, to be combined into one system 
in order to produce uh, hybrid particles, which are made of uh, inorganic, organic materials, and so on. I don't want to go into details because this is a really a huge field, uh, which is currently being explored a lot, uh, even uh, in the field of exosomes, which is, uh, uh, those of you who are familiar with biology know that uh, these uh, cells produce nanovesicles. These nanovesicles are supposed to be used, employed by cells to, by, for communication into the body with other cells. And we now, we can today uh, produce these exosomes, even artificially, in order to employ them uh, as a vehicles, as carriers. And, bio, uh, and macrofluid is one of the things that allows us to shape these exosomes and tailor the properties of these uh, nanomaterials. Now I want to go through very fast. Uh, I don't want to be long and tedious. Uh, um, just to show you some, uh, some applications uh, of, of these nanoparticles in different fields. Uh, cancer is a huge field, as you know. Uh, of course, these particles find a huge application, huge perspective in cancer, because we can really tailor them using different strategies. Here, this slide point to represent uh, different approaches we can use. We can use so different source materials, source cells from cancer, using cancer cells, which express specific proteins, specific uh, targets on the surface. Uh, immune cells, for example, stem cells, red blood cells, platelets, all of them express different, different factors, different proteins on the surface that can be used as a target, can be used uh, to target a specific target into the body, uh, or can be used as a system in order to uh, trigger a specific response in the body, which is uh, the way vaccines work today. So even to produce uh, anti-cancer vaccines, okay? Uh, and this is an example of application of uh, 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 magnetic particles with a main leukosome. These leukosomes are produced starting from leukocytes, so immune cells, and uh, they, 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 the membrane of these cells is used to uh, uh, build up these nanoparticles, which express a specific composition on the surface. And these are, they are compared to liposomes. Liposomes are other kind of particles. These are vesicles, nanovesicles that are, have a long history behind, and they have been employed in clinics for a long time. And still today, we have medicine in the, in the market which are produced uh, using liposomes. And here, very, very fast, I just want to show you uh, the uh, higher efficacy of mucosome compared to particles in accumulation into the, into the tumor. You can see the, the picture in which you, these red, red areas are the particles, which are, uh, are uh, tag particles, which express a fluorescent tag. And you can see that the red spots are much larger in case of leukosome than liposome. And you have a tumor accumulation here that shows up very nicely how leukosome can uh, accumulate into the tumor much better than liposome. And uh, uh, there's a huge difference. And also in survival, this is uh, the, the, the graph to the right that is uh, representing the survival percentage of the animals. And you can see with leukosome, you have an uh, improvement in the survival uh, of, of, the, of the animals. In this case, are mice, of course, uh, and mice models. And uh, other area of application that we applied also in cardiovascular diseases and uh, here you have the particles for uh, using HDL, which are proteins that can, uh, 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 let's say, have, have receptors into the vasculature, into the epithelial vasculature. And uh, these this slides show that uh, the inflammation in, uh, in the, into the vascular, vasculature system, the vascular system, this is a, a aortic system, uh, is reduced when you're using this, the treatment with these particles that reduce the amount of uh, macrophages that accumulate and are recalled by the inflammation effect. And the uh, number of cells that are recruited here is strongly reduced because these particles compete with, uh, uh, with the cells uh, with the receptor presence on, present on the, on the epithelial barrier. 
of the vasculature. And so then we can reduce a lot of inflammation, reduce the formation of plaques that are at the base of uh, cardiovascular disease and atherosclerosis. And uh, other applications go through the infectious diseases as well. I know you should go to the conclusion. Because okay, okay I'll go fast. Just as it even can be applied to infectious diseases, uh, to autoimmune diseases. And to, to conclude, just to say uh, what we have today in uh, these particles is that, uh, of course, we have translational particles that lead to the fact that uh, these particles, uh, that there is a, the, a strong limitation in the, in the development of nanoparticles because they are fundamentally unstable. But, uh, and as is shown by these, uh, these slides, this is representing the number of products that have been uh, marketed over the years. And you can see there are very few over the years, and this uh, uh, progression has slowed down recently. And uh, the major adults are due to the regulatory gaps that are behind the use of uh, biological materials, the complexity of manufacturing, the costs of the um, of course, the cost of the technology behind it. Also, we need a very uh, uh, advanced analytical methods in order to characterize this system and the stability issue that needs to be established. Fortunately, we have uh, had uh, the, um, the, the experience with Exosont that can help us to overcome some of the gaps. And so, to, find, to conclude, that we can say anyway that these uh, systems have a superior targeting ability, which is demonstrated by the lot of literature in the field, and can be used to develop a precision and personalized medicine, which would be the future now, uh, in order to employ, for example, employ materials coming from the patient in order to treat the patient. Because we can use cells coming from the patient to produce these nanoparticles that can be re-injected into the, into the body. And so they also have provided with a high clinical transnational potential for this reason. And of course, there are also other problems that have been already decided somehow. And most important is the, the, the assessment of the safety and the regulations. And as a final message um, is that um, uh, in order to uh, ensure the future for this system, which is a very powerful system, therapeutic system, to be a very powerful therapeutic system, we should uh, keep things easy and make things easy. So reduce the complexity, reduce the, uh, uh, and also the uh, requirement of steps in order to produce these particles in the easiest ways possible. So thank you for your questions and uh, to, for the problems and all technical problems we experienced. <laughs> okay, thank you, Stefano. Uh, very nice talk. We have time probably for one uh, question only. Uh, I see Flavia uh, that asked a question in the chat. Flavia, do you want to unmute yourself and ask the question? Yeah. Okay, she's not admitting, uh, so uh, maybe I can read the question. Uh, she's, she wrote, uh, um, thanks for the insightful presentation. One point I would like to raise offline is about the biodegradability of such nanoparticles uh, as important uh, aspect of address to address for limiting or avoiding side effects. Yes. Uh, Yes, That's, uh, okay. this is part of the um, assessment, uh, um, which is not uh, uh, biodegradable, biodegradability itself, because by, these particles are biodegradable because they are made of uh, biological materials which will be uh, somehow employed by cells and tissues and will be, um, in, in, over time, of course, uh, eliminated by the body. But the problem is the kind of... Uh, of, of uh, side uh, interactions that may occur between the particles, the components of the particles and uh, the other components into the body, especially off targets uh, around the, the main target, the main tissue. And this is something that must be assessed. And it is a huge problem when we employ 
biological sources. And this is also a problem with cell therapy. Same thing. When you employ a biological material, you need to address all the possible uh, mechanisms by which these materials can interact with tissues and cells. And these, we are still behind in this field. And this is one of the main concerns under the point, uh, the regulatory point of the development of this system. Okay, thank you, uh, uh, Stefano. Uh, Thanks to you. Really a great talk, and I think that we have to skip the coffee break and go straight to the next uh, presentation. So I leave the chair to uh, Professor.